Hello again. Thanks for watching this series, How to Mix Live Music. Before we start using the mixing desk, we are going to talk about microphones. How to choose the most suitable types and where to put them for the most common types of instrument. The choice and position of the mics will have a huge influence on the amplified sound. A much bigger difference than even the choice of mixing desk or amplifier type. So, it's worth spending time and money to make the best decision. Let's begin with the two basic types of microphone used for live music. Dynamic and condenser mics. Dynamic mics are kind of like the opposite of a loudspeaker. They have a small diaphragm that is vibrated by the sound. It pushes through some wires in a magnetic field and that creates an electrical signal. They are relatively simple, low cost and robust. So they are most frequently used for handheld vocals, drums where they are in danger of being hit and guitar cabinets. Condenser mics on the other hand require more care with their handling. They are vulnerable to humidity and vibration. They work by the sound vibrating one thin metal plate close to another fixed metal plate. So long as a small amount of electrical power is available, the voltage will vary as the distance between the two plates varies. Condenser mics can have larger diaphragms than dynamic mics, like this one, and often they have a flatter and wider frequency response, making them suitable for use with many musical instruments so long as their position is safe, stable and away from moisture. Did you know that some types of microphone are only designed to pick up the sounds in front of them, while others are designed to pick up sounds all around them in equal measure? Well, for use on stage, we are mainly interested in unidirectional mics. These are often called cardioid, because if you look at the polar pattern, it's kind of heart-shaped. A polar pattern, by the way, shows the most sensitive directions of a microphone. Cardioid is useful on stage because it can be pointed at the singer or instrument and it will not pick up so much of the sound to its side or rear. Other microphones may have a bidirectional or figure of eight pattern or be omnidirectional. These are more useful in a recording or broadcast studio and are rarely used with a PA system. Perhaps you've also heard of hypercardioid or supercardioid mics. These have a narrower pickup pattern than a regular cardioid mic and can be used where feedback and neighboring sounds are particularly troublesome. But they do require careful positioning and experienced performers to use them. So they are not always suitable. Probably the first band member you consider using a microphone for is the singer. Because singing produces a lot of air movement, you should use a microphone with a built-in pop shield. And it shouldn't pick up noise when you handle it. In most cases, a cardioid dynamic mic will suit the purpose best. A classic, well-known example is the Shure SM58, or the newer Beta 58. A good singer will vary the distance between their mouth and the mic to suit the sound pressure of each word they sing. But generally, it's best to keep the mic between 5 and 10 centimeters from the mouth for a clear sound. To gauge the distance, you can simply place your fist between your mouth and the mic. However, closer might be necessary with a really loud band on stage. And some singers might prefer the more bassy sound generated when the mic is virtually being eaten. By the way, please discourage the performer from cupping the grill of the mic in their hands. It basically changes the mic to an omnidirectional one and increases the risk of feedback noise. Specialist beatboxers might need to do it to create their sound, but otherwise it has no benefit for anyone. 
Other instruments that will benefit from the rugged nature of a dynamic mic are drums and brass instruments. Kick drums, which move a lot of air, would also require a mic with a pop shield. There are dedicated mics for this role, like the Shure Beta 52A. Choose whether to put it inside the drum to pick up the sound of the beta hitting the skin, or outside to pick up a more resonant boom, or just inside the hole for a balanced sound. Many instruments would benefit from the extra clarity of mics without a pop shield. The Shure SM57 is a classic example and is often used on snare drums and brass instruments. It's still strong enough to cope with a few hard knocks. Another option for brass and woodwind instruments is a small clip-on mic. Audio-Technica Pro 35 is a cardioid dynamic mic which clips right onto the instrument's bell. For brass, place the mic at the exit of the horn. For woodwind, their sound comes partly from the finger holes and partly from the bell, so point the mic to collect sound from both. One exception, though, is the flute. Use a vocal mic with a pop shield for that because of the airflow over the sound hole. Again, keep the mic five to 10 centimeters away. Now let's discuss which instruments would benefit from a condenser mic. Well, anything with a wide frequency range, lots of mid and high frequency content, and is in a safe position on stage. If you have an acoustic piano, try pointing two cardioid condenser mics at the strings, one for low, the other for high strings. And a similar mic would work well above a violin, pointing towards the F holes, but far enough away not to be hit by the player's bow. If the guitarist uses a speaker cabinet to obtain their special sound, you're gonna need a mic for that. A large diaphragm condenser mic, such as the AT4040, could provide a more detailed sound than a dynamic mic. Position it about five centimeters from the speaker grill and try it a little way from the center of the speaker's cone. And now back to the drum kit. As I'm sure you know, drums can be played very loudly. In fact, they are much easier to play loudly than quietly. So you should consider whether you need any microphones at all. The smaller the venue and the louder the drummer, the less necessary it is. Anyway, we've already talked about kick drum mics, which is often the first drum mic to consider when beefing up the beat. Then, if you have limited time or budget, you can add a pair of overheads to pick up all the toms, cymbals, hi-hat and snare drum too. Place them at about standing height above the kit, with one pointing towards the floor tom and the ride cymbal, and the other pointing towards the hi-hat and the snare. Audio-Technica AT4040 is a good example of a suitable condenser cardioid mic, which includes a robust shock mount. Just those three mics on the kit will often be enough if it is tuned well and played with consistent skill. If you need extra power from the snare and the toms, use dynamic mics without a pop shield. Sure SM57 is often seen pointing at a snare drum. For toms, it's more convenient to use clip-on mics like the Sennheiser E604. Compare their sound when pointing towards the center of the drum and when pointing more towards the rim. Then select your favorite position. On the snare drum, a single mic close to the top rim might sound too dry. So if time allows, try an additional mic below, pointing up towards the snares. We'll talk more about that technique in a later episode. But the overall drum sound will be a blend of all the mics used. So even if one single close mic doesn't sound realistic by itself, in combination with the other mics, it could be closer to ideal. 
And nothing beats having time to experiment with mic placement and finding the perfect sound. Anyway, once you've roughly positioned the mics and plugged them in, it's time to power on the mixer and start adjusting the input settings. Join me next time to work through the topics of gain, phantom power, and polarity. See you soon.